In this episode, we're going to create a GET HTTP endpoint, which is listing all our to-dos stored in our DynamoDB table. Similar than before, we create a new function. In this case, it's going to be named list. There's a handler, which is again in the to-dos directory. It's a list.js file with a list exported function. And then we attach an event. It's going to be an HTTP event with the path to-dos and the method GET. We also enable course. This is all the configuration we need, as we already previously defined the identity and access management roles. Let's create the list.js file and start to write the code. In the first line, we're going to enable strict mode. We're going to import the AWS SDK and instantiate a DynamoDB client. Then we create our list function, which is going to be exported. And again, it takes three arguments, event, context, and callback. To actually fetch data from the DynamoDB, we have to use DynamoDB.scan. It takes two arguments, the params, and the callback. The callback, again, consists of error and result. Our parameters for the scan function are actually going to be very simple. It's just going to be the table name, and because there's no dynamic element, we can define them outside of the function. Same as in the create function with dynamodb.put, the behavior of the callback is going to be like only if an error actually has happened, the error is a truthful value. We create an if block for the error and log out the error. We invoke the callback with a new error instance and return. In case retrieving data from DynamoDB was successful, we're going to construct the response with a status code 200 and then actually stringify the result. The callback of list is then invoked with the first argument to be null because there's no error and the second argument the response. That's all the code we need and now we can actually redeploy our service using serverless deploy. This time we see two endpoints the post for create and the get for list. We're going to copy it and invoke it with curl to validate that we can actually fetch a list of our existing to-dos. As we can see, it returned an array with one object in it, which is our previously created learn serverless to-do item. 